Hello, welcome to this Price a Job tutorial series on how to create a custom module in Price a Job. In this first video of the series, we'll introduce the concept and discuss how to add resources to a custom module. Price a Job comes complete with over 200 construction modules that you can use to easily estimate any domestic job. And if you feel that a module is missing, please contact us and we'll include it in a future release. However, until then, you'll just have to make do with over 200 modules covering just about every aspect of domestic construction estimating. Or you do have the option to create a custom module yourself, and as a builder, we think you'll take right to it. Here, under the Other Costs module in the Module Toolbar, you'll find a very special module called Custom Module. Go ahead and select this. This will allow you to create a custom module from scratch, which you can then save and reuse again and again whenever the need arises. Here you can set your module title, location, and folder. But let's skip all that and jump right in and click Create. This creates a brand new blank custom module. In the middle, you'll notice there are three panes, Sketch, Description, and Estimate, all of which are blank at the moment. On the right, we have a main setup pane that we will use to help set up the module. By the time we're done this tutorial series, we will have created two modules, a simple and an advanced. So we'll start with the basics and work our way up to further details as we move along. Let's get started by organizing our group folder. Currently titled Custom Module, let's go ahead and click on the three dots and rename our group folder. We will call this Outbuildings and save. And now our group folder shows the new name, Outbuildings. Now we can rename the custom module. We can do that here by clicking the three dots and selecting Rename. Or we can do that over here in the setup bar. And we can do that directly just by selecting the module title and giving it our new name. In this case, it is called Garden Shed Simple. And when we deselect the title, we see it reflected over in our group folder as well. Next, we'd like to change this icon. So let's select the icon. And we have the choice to select an icon from the Price a Job library, or we can select one from our own computer. And we'll select this shed icon to represent our garden shed. Next, let's take a look at the project settings down here in the bottom left. Here, under the VAT and Profit tab, we can choose whether to include our profits in the estimate or remove it. We can do that by selecting the Add Profit box or showing or hiding the profit on screen. We also have the ability to adjust the profits for materials, labor, plant and tool, and other costs by adjusting the sliders as necessary. For this simple module, to keep everything very basic, let's deselect the Add Profit to show our net costs. And down below, where it asks if we are VAT registered, we'll say yes, so that the totals will be net of VAT. When it comes time for us to provide an estimate quote, we'll be sure to add our profit back in. For now, we'll just close the Project Details tab and proceed with net costs. The Sketch pane and Description pane and Estimate panes can all be adjusted as necessary, and you also have the option to adjust them to full screen. Each one, the Sketch pane, the Description pane, and the Estimate pane. To start building our module, the first thing we'll want to do is add some materials. So here in the Estimate pane, under the Stage Title, we can select the icon Add New Material. And this opens the Price a Job library of materials that we can choose from, or we can just simply select the material title here and start typing. In this case, we require a garden shed for a price of £1,000. Our garden shed will also require a base, so for that, let's insert some paving slabs. For this, let's select that from the library. So over here in the search, we will type paving slabs. And as we type, the search results are automatically filtered to show us the relevant results. So in this case, we will select textured paving slabs. 
And rather than setting the quantity at one each, let's change this to meters squared. And I expect we'll need approximately eight square meters. So we'll enter eight for the quantity. In this case, we won't need to input the price because it is taken automatically from the price or job library. Next, let's enter a material for the subbase aggregate. In this case, we will need shop sand. So over here under the library, we will type in sand, and that's far too many results. So we'll adjust our search to shop sand. And that narrows the results to be more manageable. In this case, we require shop sand, a bulk bag will do. And because we only require one bulk bag, we can just leave the quantity set at one. You'll notice that the icons representing each material are highlighted in either gray or orange. The gray represents an icon that we input manually. The orange icons represent a material that was drawn from the price of job library. If this material that we input manually is something that we'll be recalling later on in other modules, we can add it manually to the library by clicking the gear icon here and adding it to library. We can confirm the title, the price, and select a category in which it belongs. In this case, we might say landscaping. And then save. That adjusts the color of the icon to orange, representing that this material is now included in the price of job library. If we'd like to change the order in which our materials appear, we can grab these double lines here and drag the materials to whichever position we require. In this case, the hierarchy of shed and base and subbase seems to fit, so we'll just keep it in the same order here. And even though the price of these library materials is imported automatically, if we are able to get the materials at a cheaper price, we can go ahead and override that price here by just typing in directly. When we do so, the price is highlighted in yellow, representing that this is an overridden price. And this is just a visual reminder that we have overridden the price from the price of job library. If we need to reset this price back to the price of job library price, we can just click the gears icon and select reset. And that resets back to the library price. Also under the gears icon, we can choose to visit the website of this material and confirm the pricing and view the description for the material which price of job has synced to the library. And also under the material settings icon, we can also remove this line if we choose to just remove this material, which in this case we don't want to do. Next, let's add some labor. So up in the top here, we can select the add new labor icon. And that adds a new category in our stage for labor. So here we'll give our labor description a name, install garden shed, and we can assign this task to a specific tradesperson. Right now it's default to the general builder, However, we could assign that to any number of skilled tradespeople, and that would automatically update the hourly price. A carpenter, 2808 per hour. A general builder, 20 pounds 80 per hour. The default rates for these tradespeople are stored up here under the company tab, under the tradespeople resources. Here you can see the default rates for each tradespeople. For carpenter, it's 2808. And for general builder, it's 2080. You can change these default rates or set a specific custom rate for specific jobs. Additionally, depending on the area that you are estimating in, there may be geographic modifiers that either reduce or increase the rate. To keep things simple, we'll just keep our geographic modifier set at 0% and we'll stick with the provided default rates. So let's go back to our estimate and into our garden shed module. And for our general builder, we can estimate that the labor will take approximately five hours. Now that our stage is starting to take shape, let's rename the stage title. We'll call this shed. And when we do so, the stage title is changed here within the chart and also here within the setup pane. Now let's create a new stage for our shed for decoration. So we'll click add stage and we can choose a title from the library or we can create one ourselves. So in this case, we'll call this decorating and create the stage. And this creates a new stage below our existing stage. And we see it here in the estimate pane as well as here in the setup pane. So to complete our decorating stage, let's start by selecting the add new material icon. 
And let's search the library for some wood stain. And from the filtered list, let's select some saddle and classic matte neutral. And for this, for the quantity, we can estimate that we'll require two tubs. Next, we'll add some labor to apply the wood stain. So we'll select add new labor. And we can also search this from the library. So we'll just type in wood stain. And we can select from the library, apply wood stain or apply two coats of wood stain. So we'll select apply two coats of wood stain and the price of job library automatically recommends that this be applied by a painter for tradespeople. And we can estimate that the labor involved will be 4.5 hours. And as we input that, we can see all of our totals updated to reflect the new estimate. If we'd like to take a quick look at the work we've done so far, we can go to the reports tab and select our quote. And here we see the very basic estimate and over in the right sidebar, we can adjust the quote settings to show various levels of detail to create either a simple or advanced quote. It's entirely up to you which items you wish to include within the quote. You can add or remove the description, materials, labor, plant and tool, other costs, price, or units. And this is a good time to remember that we did hide the profit from showing on our quote. So let's go back into project settings and we can select the add profit icon here to include our profit markup in the quote. A quick shortcut to display or hide the profit is this checkbox here for profit. This is net costs. This is the quote including profit. By hiding the profit, we see our net costs, which makes the project easy for us to understand. But of course, we want to display the profit when we're ready to supply the quote to the customer. And that covers the basics of how to create a blank custom module and add the resources. In the next tutorial, we'll discuss how to add a description to a custom module. Thank you for using Price a Job. Thank you.